It's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. And, 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 you know, we live in the middle of um, vineyards on one side, hills on the other. The olive oil is, is right here. The olive trees are right here. Right outside of our gate in the woods, we have uh, the girl who's got her beehives and that's where our honey comes from. So there's a lot of, um, the, you know, there's a lot of really living from the land here, which I really appreciate very, very much. Um, so it's not that weird for us, you know, as many people will know, also your listeners, um, viewers, who live in rural places, you, we tend to be quite used to a kind of an isolated life anyway, actually, and also to having enough stuff for, you know, because you, look, I'm a London girl, so I'm like, you know, brought up in Tehran, then London. I'm city, city, city. So I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of, you know, if I need milk, I'll just go downstairs and buy. Uh, so I've happily been here for, I've been living with, how long have I been with them? 10, 10, 11 years? I don't know. So I've been living here for a while. So I've adapted mm -hmm. um, to the fact that, you know, our, our cupboards need to be full. There needs to be lifelong milk. You, you know, there's got to be stuff so that you, you can't get into town for a few days to do your shopping. Um, it's a very different mentality. So from that point of view, you know, we have quite a full house anyway. We, um, my husband, as you know, breeds the dogs. He has at least a month's worth of kind of dog food downstairs. You know, we, we work on the scale in any case. Anyway, I came back here. I spent a week at home resting. Now thinking, should have got my hair cut. Um, <laughs> didn't do it. <laughs> well, I could have. <laughs> Didn't do any of that. It looks fabulous. That's all I have to say. I, you, but darling. I was so glad I got my hair colored too. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Well, you know, honestly, we all video each other every day, and it's just everyone's looking more wild every day. It's, it's quite. It's very sweet, actually. Um, anyway, I stayed home for a week, thinking, well, I just, and also partly thinking I should probably self isolate. You know, I've been in London. I've been traveling. It, it's, you know, I, I thought that there was no great urgency to throw myself into any kind of social interaction. And just as I was thinking, uh, you know, time to go and get my hair cut and see my friends and um, get back into the choir and, you know, all of the kind of stuff that I do that I love. There was this decree. So it was the 7th. So the week, a couple of weekends ago, right? So the weekend of the 7th of March on the Saturday, it was leaked that the government was going to issue a decree that was going to literally lock down those areas in the north of the country. So no one would be able to come and go. So what happened is because that was leaked out, that was going to come into force on Monday to give people s Sunday to, you know, come home. Um, it was leaked out on Saturday night. And literally the pictures, images of people running through um, Milan Centrale train station to get the last train south. It kind of went viral after that. So people just panicked. People, people you know, both ways. People ran back to those areas and they ran out of those areas and so of course what they did and this was the absolute fear is they probably took the virus down and spread it to the rest of the country and that's yeah. why when that became evident on Sunday the government issued a new decree and they shut down the whole country and that's when they came they said Italy is because they'd been calling those areas the red zone so they said we no longer have red zones um, of Lombardy and the Veneto and um, parts of um, Emilia Romagna, but now the whole of Italy is a protected zone. A yes. protected zone. What does that mean? No one, but it basically meant, and, you know, what it meant became clear during the day. So at that point, again, that was a, that came into force on Tuesday. So what was it, 10th or something? I don't know. It's, it's all getting a bit blurry now. I know. But about right? 10 days ago, yeah. Um, and then, and that was when, again, I was still speaking to my friends in Florence and going, but the cafes, restaurants, everything's open. Places could be open as long as they could make sure that people could be distant, you know, far away enough from each other. So lots of restaurants just took out half their tables and that kind of thing. Now, schools were already closed. Gyms were already, I think a lot of them were already closing. But, you know, life was kind of going on in a restricted fashion. I have and, a question. I have a question. Yes. Because at that point, and so much has changed so fast. When those decrees were out and, and they were starting to adjust businesses, because over here there have been phases of people understanding what things mean and, and really listening 
and some people are in denial. So I'm curious at that point, do you think people were like, oh, I better be careful? Or were they like, this is so annoying. They're moving tables out, but I'm just going to go about my life. What was the attitude? Um, so from what I understand, so bear in mind, I wasn't in the city. I, yeah. I was here. But from what I understand is a lot of people took, um, took it on board and took precautions. But um, a lot of people didn't. And that's not necessarily because people are bad or whatever. But it, it's, right. um, it's really hard to get your head around, Keddy. It's really hard to get your head around. We all live in liberal democracies. We just get up and do what we want all the time without thinking twice about it, right? Yeah. So when they say to you, don't do this, don't do that, and you go, okay, well, this is dangerous, this is dangerous. But you still, if you think that on that Tuesday, I was still, I was in touch with, you know, my favorite cafe in Florence, you know, Chibreo, that's in the book. And um, in fact, with Izzy Dora, who is also in the book. And he said, yeah, we're open until five. And I was thinking, well, I'll just go in tomorrow because also it'll be amazing to see Florence completely empty <laughs> without all the tourists. And yeah. I'll have a coffee and I won't touch anyone. I'll have my gloves on and I'll stay far and all of this. And, and you see, my husband was going, you can't do that. You can't do that. The point is to not do things like this. And, and I didn't do it. But the fact is, you can't get your head around it. So I do know that lots of people carried on. They carried on taking precautions as what they see as precautions, but they anyway carried on. And I think what's becoming clear as time is going on is you can't, you just can't. So they shut down everything the next day, hmm. boom. They just shut it all down. And this is what I say to my friends who, um, who are in countries that are a few weeks behind us, where now, you know, schools have been suspended, some social distancing measures have come in, but, at, and people have been asked to stay home, but really, life is going on um and i'm saying well i think that you know things get closed down when actually they start to realize that people aren't doing enough and and the disease is, is it's just the infection rate is just growing too fast so that was the response you know every day there's been new decrees and they've just been responses to people and even now even so, you know, it was the Tuesday, the lockdown for the whole country started. The Wednesday, everything closed apart from shops selling food and essentials, that kind of thing, and pharmacies. So no bars. And, you know, hard as it was, in a weird way, it made things easier because um, it took away the confusion. Yeah. We had no choice. So there was no longer, oh, shall I? Shall we? Have yeah. Is it okay? Shall That's we? That's so that? true. Shall we go for that walk? Should we do this? We couldn't. It was really simple. Everything's closed. You can't do it. And then this thing of decrees, came, this um, of forms came in. So, you know, every day there's another little decree and another little thing. And maybe that's partly because if you tried to kind of download that on people, right, so everything all at once, people wouldn't accept it. But actually, as time goes on and people start to get used to things and and actually what really happened when that lockdown happened is this extraordinary burst of solidarity yes. and the sense of unity and community has been extraordinary, Teddy. And, you know, we love the Italians, all of us that love Italy and love the Italians, we also love them because they're boisterous, they're noisy, they're rule-breaking, they're anarchic, they won't do what they're told. And I didn't think this country had um, quite as much maturity as it's shown recently. I've been absolutely blown away. You know, Giuseppe Conte comes on the television every night and he is so solid. He is sober. He's measured. He is direct. Um, he says things in um, a very empathetic way. And... Um, my respect for him, my respect for the Italian state from that point of view has really gone up. You know, there's been no drama, there's been no hysterics. Um, you know, shelves were being emptied in supermarkets four weeks ago when it first started. Okay. Now, people are reasonable. In fact, from the lockdown, what happened is this whole panicking thing that's, that's going on that I'm hearing about has stopped here because um, people were assured there would be food. 
what there is is there's queues outside places because um, small shops don't want don't want more than one or two people. In. You actually self regulate. I went to the post office the first day of the lockdown because you know I make this um, balm and I had some friends who oh, were that's in lockdown. Right. I have some. I love it. And uh, we're gonna link uh, they to were in lockdown in various places. Thank you. They were in lockdown in various places, but actually, weirdly enough, here you go, two weeks of self-isolation, and I did something I'd been meaning to do for ages, right? So I finally managed to infuse my oil with turmeric root, which I've been meaning to do for a really long time, because I know that that will make my oil um, and my balm so anti-inflammatory and even more healing for psoriasis and all of those kinds of eczema and those skin conditions that for about a year I've been meaning to do this. Okay. So I finally did it. I also infused some coconut oil with turmeric because I thought we don't have that much turmeric root. It's really hard to find here. We're never going to find it again. So what's the best way to make sure this goes on for a while? So I went and I did some research. So I've infused coconut oil with turmeric as well. So that is delicious, by the way, for smoothies, for cooking with. And also um, I've been using that to make my balm. So I rushed out because I had friends in lockdown who've had accidents and that's just tough because, you know, they're all bruised and battered and in lockdown. So I rushed out to the post office first day of lockdown to send them some of this, my new anti-inflammatory balm, because that's also what you do now. You just go, I just want to care for people. So it's, yeah. this isn't even about, you know, it, these are just gifts. You just want to give what you can to help whoever mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but i noticed even in our tiny village post office you know when there was two people out there was two people in there very far away from each other i stayed outside i then was being served and the other people stayed outside yeah. so people are naturally self-regulating also in all the shops they have got tapes on the floor showing where you should stand and what the correct distance is between people yeah at the supermarket they've got tapes on the floor uh, they were almost kind of like police lines where <laughs> you know to indicate how far away you should stand away from each other in the queue how far you should stand from the cashier and the conveyor belt and they've all now have erected these perspex um walls in front of the cashier so that you can't well spit at each other yeah no it's a great idea <laughs> you know and and um and only one person can go through at one time so it's made things slower Sometimes there's two hour queues outside of supermarkets, especially in the big cities. Everyone's standing very calmly, at least two meters away from each other. And this is what I mean. Um, the Italians are being so civilized, so polite, so kind. Um, I've heard a friend told me in Paris yesterday because they started their lockdown the other day. They said, oh, it was all very civilized. Everyone's standing far away from each other outside the boulangerie. But once they got in there, everyone was on top of each other fighting. And actually, it hasn't been like this in Italy. Everyone is, um, everyone is amazingly polite <laughs> suddenly. But isn't that for a the, beautiful thing? I mean, I, it's I an do. amazing thing. You know, for the first time ever, when you're in the supermarket or whatever, and you know, Italians love to chat and they love to stand really close. <laughs> and <laughs> and and you know, for those who are a bit more British or a bit more like. Oh, <laughs> some space please um you know that can be quite challenging so because don't italians as well they they're 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 regularly kissing as well everybody kisses everybody they touch they kiss they hug they get they stand very close they talk very very loudly you know and right now what we're doing is you know someone will say to me uh, excuse me from a meter and a half away would you mind moving your trolley so I can go past? And I'll say, oh, no, please do. And <laughs> we're, all, we're all just very, very, very polite to each other. And actually, um, the, there's also, you know, you do that dance where you're trying to not walk the same way. That's happening yeah. quite a lot because everyone's trying to avoid, you know, being close to anyone. Yes. And it's actually making everybody laugh. And I, I, look, this is anecdotal, but this is the experience that I've had. But this is what everyone is telling me around is um, – this sense of kind of unity and this 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 weird thing that we all took for granted, which is that we can be close to people, and yep. suddenly we can't. And this fact that you cannot touch other humans and you can't have this kind of interaction, it's really brought at home how important that is. And it's made us because I see this look in the eyes of everybody I encounter 
whether it's, you know, someone across the field over there, whether it's the cashier behind or whether it's, you know, the TV presenter who is famous TV presenter who's presenting his show with no audience, with no hair and makeup, with tears in his eyes. You know, we all have the same look. We all want to survive. We all want to live. We all want to be well. And we all want everyone to be well. Yeah. And one of the greatest things they've managed to do here, and that's what's been really moving too, is the sense of social responsibility. Uh, I've seen, and, and that's in direct contrast to what you were saying about, you know, the teenagers going out or the people going out thinking, well, this isn't going to affect me. Um, can we hear you? <laughs> here, she's here. Do you want to see her? Oh, hi, babe. Oh. oh, my God. She's so beautiful. Oh, I want to be there. Hi, <laughs> Beat. <laughs> Come here, darling. Come and sit with me. What's here. her name? Come here. This one is Brita. Hi, Beauty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she is a pure love thing. Oh, my you, gosh. You know, her face, like, for a second there, she looked like a mountain lion. Like, the face. So proud. Beautiful. They're such proud animals. Oh, such, she's but so we're beautiful. very lucky to have them. Yeah. Oh. So, you're going to distract everyone. Yeah. Well, oh, you, you know, have your very loving faces. What you just said, I wrote it down because it's, I, I agree with everything. And I think that these are, these are some of the good, beautiful things that are coming out of this. Is Amazing. That Absolutely. The, the awareness of everything that we take for granted. And, yeah. You know, like for me, I, there are, I've always been aware of, cause I've gone through some really hard years, the past five, six years. And I would always be the person that was able to walk outside and go, this air, I'm so grateful for the, the air and seeing the buds on the trees. But there are people who have, especially over here in our hustle and bustle, and it sounds like obviously that's everywhere. We yeah. take for granted. We take for granted yeah. that we can go to the store. We take for granted that we can hug all our of parents. We take all for of granted it. if mom's in the hospital, we can go see her. And so all of these things, we won't take for granted again. We and take it for granted, Kelly, that when we need to buy some... I don't know, toilet paper. We just go to the store and buy toilet paper. And as everyone is seeing right now in the world, there's not so, you know, and also here the shelves are not always full, but they, they do quite a good job. And, and people, yes, um, yes, we take lots of things for granted. And this is, this, is, this is really amped up a bunch of things that, for, that are now so natural. You know, I do my gratitude practice. Um, and now that it's just that it's not a practice, it's life. Because we wake up in the morning and we look at each other and we go, how lucky are we? How Amen. lucky are we? First of all, we're well. You know, because this virus, you know, it attacks your lungs. So every morning when I stand outside and I breathe, I think, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you that I can breathe. This simple act of breathing. How amazing is that? <laughs> Dogs, what are you doing? Sorry, <laughs> I can hear. Um, that in itself, we have a house. We have a roof over our heads. We're not worried about being thrown out tomorrow. We are in the middle of the countryside. We're not stuck in a, you know, 45 square meter apartment. Um, we're in the countryside, we have everything that we need. We have these marvelous creatures living with us who cheer us up and give us so much love. We just look at each other every morning and we say this and it's not an effort, it's not a practice, it's reality. It's reality, it's our daily reality, you know. And the, the thing that's really turned things around here and I can see that that mentality hasn't yet quite arrived everywhere else, but it will. It's about protecting other people. Yeah. That is what the government here has really focused on. It's, it, it's not saying don't go out because you are going to... They're saying don't go out because if you, you have it and you don't know, yeah. you're going to infect and you're going to take it to people who are vulnerable. And that, it's that emphasis on social responsibility. It's that emphasis on... Um, on thinking about others and doing the right thing now this is this is this is jenny you have oh. to meet her because she's my little gem and she's my little 
little piece of magic, aren't you, darling? How, no. how old is she? Is she Jen's happy? seven. She's, oh. she's are you seven, darling. Yeah, she's my oh. <laughs> oh, my God. They're so beautiful. So, anyway, yeah. So, they're very, we're very lucky. So, this kind of thing, you know, um, this sense of that we're all in it together, the sense of solidarity and this outpouring of love and respect for the medical profession. Yeah. The fact that, you know, that first Saturday, everyone went out on their windows and balconies at midday and just clapped, clapped for the medics. Um, I'm really inspired by this because in Iran, they've started to do this too and they've learned this from Italy. They go out at 10 o'clock in the evening and they, or they stand at their windows and they clap for all their health workers. Um, and then the singing, you know, I'm sure you've seen yeah. all of the singing that started, it started with, you know, stuff. and that again has been a really beautiful gift. And I, it really touched my heart that, you know, the Italian response was, was to sing, was to make music, was to, uh, was to do harmonies. You know, you, you hear that sometimes that, you know, people are singing down the street and they're harmonizing with each other. You know, I put up a video of a, a guy playing his saxophone in Sicily. I saw you know, that. Trumpet. Yeah. It was his trumpet playing Imagine. And, it, you know, I think we all wept. And I just, these little things, you know, of, or an apartment building in Rome, I think, where, again, I don't know if you saw this, where someone was projecting. Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers singing Aww. and dancing on a building, apartment building opposite. And in one of the windows next to this black and white flickering image of, of, um, of them dancing, this couple got up and started to dance. It's just, I mean, these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful human moments that are really um, helping. They give everyone courage. We love that Iranians have learned from the Italians to come out on their windows and sing every night. And now the Spaniards are doing it and the French, you know. Um, there are so many beautiful things coming out of this. Um, Don't you think that it's, I mean, even just when you and I were connecting and we were planning to do this anyway before this happened because of your book, which we haven't even gotten into today. We'll do that next <laughs> time. But yeah, right. I think, you know, every, this is what I want people to start focusing on is there's so much good that's coming out of this. And what I just heard you say, you know, even so the, the gentleman, and he's going to hear me say this, that produces my podcast, he's in um, um, Bosnia, I believe. And then the guy who does my YouTube videos, he's in another part of Russia, if I'm correct. Um, I'm geographically challenged. So Steve always makes fun of me. He's like, I'll go, oh, isn't that by Turkey? And he's like, <laughs> I'm working on it. But, um, you know, I'm, I, I interact with these people all the time. And then all of a sudden I realize like, what's, what's hitting me in my world is hitting him. It's hitting yeah. you. And it's bringing cultures together because even though maybe historically we might say this country has an issue with this country or whatever now it's like this is the world and we're all people who Kelly, are finding common ground and ways to help each other and encourage each other it is the greatest leveler that i've come across mm -hmm. you look into the eyes of anybody and you're the same because we're all the same we're all humans we're all susceptible to this virus. We all don't want to get it. And we all don't want to make someone else sick either, right? And, yeah. you know, this virus, it's, uh, 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 this is not to downplay how horrifying it is. But, you know, the things it's showing us is there are no borders. There are no countries. Mm -hmm. There is no division. We're all the same. Where you know, I'm going to be a real hippie here and put it out there. We're like one brotherhood of man, man. <laughs> it's know? true. And it's, it's true. showing us this because we're all, no one is safe from this. And we're all suffering because actually, whether it's hit our country yet in like that kind of way or not, um, there is a kind of, I really think this, I feel it even more now because I keep thinking, how is it that every day I can feel the shifts in mood 
but I'm not having a social life. And this is where I really think, you know, there, there is the matrix. We are picking up the global vibe and we are picking up the vibes that are, that are kind of going on. And um, we're suffering, you know, the humanity is suffering. This is painful. and We can't control it. We're not used to that. Yeah. We don't know how to, um, we must not surrender in the sense that we must not, we must not give up. We must not um, stop the fight as it were, but we do need to surrender to our new situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me until day five or six of lockdown, actual lockdown with everything closed for my, to have that little shift in my head because before I'd been going, it's going to be a month and then, you know, and then we'll all start to go back to normal. Um, when I'm wondering what to do about, you know, stuff that I've got arranged for like July, you know, um, should I cancel? Sure. I was thinking all of this is going to, and then, and then on that day five, I suddenly went, we're not going back anywhere. This is, this is we're not going back to it. This is like nine eleven. There is no, it's a before and after. Mm-hmm. This is, this is, we, we're, we're going to come out of this into a new world. We really are. And that can be really scary, mm -hmm. really scary, but also it can be really exciting. So, I, but I, you know, the, the terror, the fear, the heartbreak, um, when we see, like I say, army trucks rolling out of Bergamo at night, because they're taking away the dead bodies because there aren't enough crematoriums and cemeteries for them. The fact that here we are and the numbers are still growing. Italy is up to 40 something thousand now. It's had the most deaths, even more than China. You know, Italy of course has the Europe's oldest population. So it's, it's, that's why it's being hit quite so severely. Um, I don't think that we should be in any kind of denial about the terror and the pain of this. And I feel like there's probably a good way to sit with the fear too, mm -hmm. because I don't think we want to go in denial. Right. Right. Um, but I, I, I do feel that there is a way to transmute that and to try, as you were saying, to stay positive, to stay in the higher vibrations because this is going to be, it is a massive change for humanity. We're all, look what we're all going to have to learn to do. We're going to have to learn to like talk to the people we live with, right? Mm -hmm. Here, families are rediscovering each other. Yeah. You know, people are spending time with each other. Now, that's not always good, right? There's been something like 80%. 80% increase in domestic violence, for example. Really? Yeah. There's lots of people whose homes aren't safe, right? Yeah. Um, so we've got to, I think that's what we've got to remember. We've got to remember in the middle of it all how lucky we are, how lucky we are. And because we're so lucky, how can we help the people that are less lucky? Um, and I think technology can really help us. Mm -hmm. um, this has been this has been wonderful. I mean, look here we are, and look how funny this is, right, Kelly? We've been trying to do this for so long, and look, finally we've got time. Yeah, this is the thing that's going to kind of, apart from obviously the horror, the virus. I, 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 I please don't. I'm not downplaying that, but um, in a way, the thing that's going to rock most of our worlds even more is the fact that we suddenly have this commodity that is so precious. Mm -hmm. in the 21st century that we never have exactly doing the first, which I is time post, i put that in my post last night which is yeah this is so everything is the the virus the sickness the uncertainty is so awful but the beautiful thing that we have in this world right now is this internet thing that all you know 10 20 years ago we all took for granted and we took for granted five months ago and so many things that we've taken for granted the awareness that we have now of every, we look at that. There's so many to me, beautiful things that are coming out of this. The fact that we can do this with zoom, God bless zoom, God bless the internet. The fact that we can stay connected and, and over here, I can go 
on Instagram and see what people are doing in Italy and see the good that's happening, that we can have this show. We're going to have, we started off saying we're going to have an interview. We're going to have a show. Who knows what's going to come out of this? <laughs> you know what you said earlier about your bomb. I mean, for everybody yeah. listening and watching, you guys didn't know, you know, and we'll talk about that in one of the future episodes, but she's um, come up with this beautiful bomb. And so, so many businesses, so many entrepreneurs or small business owners think, and I said this in my post yesterday, I said, think about how many times over the past year you've said, I wish I could do this, organize my files. I don't have time. I wish I could organize my office. I don't have time. Oh, I, I need to learn a second language, but I don't have time. We have that time to do yeah. that stuff that we've we been do. saying we didn't because of yeah. all the socializing we've been doing or the travel. Yeah. 